So I started learning Unity when it was 4.5 at a point when I hardly knew how to program beyond mere basics. Fast forward past a few versions, meandering many pronged self learning a professional career at various degree 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 Unity. Heck, even created a Pong game in Unity, more hiatus, etc., etc., so on and so forth. I finally came to the conclusion that the only way to make any real progress is to start making stuff again. At first I thought I'd make one game a day for 30 days, then realized I had no idea of how to do something even if I knew what it is that I wanted to do. So I brought it down to making any number of games for 30 days, and then finally 21 days. You'll see why as I go through this. I also set out some criteria to have clear start and end points. These were, 1. Start off with a list of ideas to choose from. 2. I can use any resource available to me, including reuse if necessary. 3. Game will have some type of mechanics and the capability of progression through the levels. With all that out of the way, let's get on with the show. To start off the challenge, I picked up one of the sketches I had and with that in mind created a new 2D Unity project. And then, nothing. I realized I could mock up something as easily in 2D space as I was used to working in 3D space. After a while of flailing about, I went online for some info. I watched a video from Brockies for making a 2D game and then I realized I could take a look at a Pong clone I had made on my own after following a block breaker tutorial I followed from a Unity 2D course from GameDevTV. With that little refresher, I created some sprites, added some 2D box colliders, rigid body for collision and physics capabilities, and mocked up a simple prototype capable of movement and jump mechanics. There was an issue with jumping where the sprite would keep climbing when the button was held. Found a fix online for it, but that stopped the sprite being able to move laterally while jumping, so the whole code had to be reworked. Next up was an issue where the sprite would keep moving even if near an obstacle. I tried a simple fix I found of adding zero friction physics material which kinda did what I wanted but not exactly what I was hoping for. So eventually this is what I came up with. I wanted to somehow keep that stickiness problem as that was supposed to be part of my play mechanics. When faced with a higher obstacle you can stick to the side and jump off it and use the rebound to get a higher jump. So I tried several things with reversing the vector 2 inputs to push the player back with varying results and lack thereof. Finally settled on adding a negative force to the rigid body when it reaches that particular obstacle. Next up was trying to localize the backward force on the player when faced with the higher obstacle so the player could rebound and jump higher. So this was done with a quick and dirty fix of a small 2D collider placed higher up the obstacle. The final mechanic was how to create a situation where the rebound would make the player jump higher. So again a simple way is found and a slight deviation from the plan mechanic. Instead of rebounding and being able to jump higher from that rebound, a counter was created that once a player hits a small collider more than three times they would get a momentary jump boost allowing them to clear the higher obstacle. There was slight issues for the height boost being additively increased, but a little playing around with some loops and triggers finally ended up with a simple increase, weight and decrease back to normal force. Once the mechanics were sorted, it was on to creating more levels and progression through them. Prefabs I made of the level elements allow for quick prototyping of new levels and the mechanic created an easy way to create complexity and increase hardness without doing anything extra. So I ended up with 4 levels altogether, although the last one is pure filler, and start and end scenes for the game. I tried using the code from an old tutorial for moving between levels, however there was issues with utilizing that within this game which I eventually ironed out. On a side note, I did want to implement a jump gain counter that would indicate the meter buildup as a player jumps off the special ledge. I wanted this to float above the player's location as they moved. It wasn't as straightforward as I imagined it would be, and the final result based on numerous things people were mentioning online was the text loosely floating on top of the player and not precisely over them nor tracking their location. So scrap that. This whole process took a bit over 12 hours over 4 days. The extra day or two of lag trying to fix issues or hitting snacks on implementing features made the process feel more arduous and that's primarily why I cut down from 30 days of making a game to 21 days instead. For game 2, the basic premise is a top-down platformer of sorts, where the path you choose at the end of the gangway will open up new paths which may or may not lead you to the end goal. Unlike the first game, I sketched out 4 levels before starting the project. And this time around I noticed that I can create 3D primitives even in 2D mode. With that I started prepping the camera and play area and dropped in a plane which will form the tiles the player will walk on. The 3D primitives saved me from having to create sprites but there were asset rotation and positioning issues. Then I had to wire up a way to make it so the player's movements will set off a system of briefly displaying the paths when the player approaches. This was way trickier than I anticipated. Although it looks relatively simple, even disabling and enabling paths before the game started proved challenging initially. Another thing I had to do was keep the player within the middle of the tiles. At first I tried clamping the range of motion and then using tags, which created edge cases. No pun intended. Really. But this made the code get bloated and unwieldy. In the end I had to use invisible colliders instead to lock the player onto the path. 
Then using a system of collision detection, coroutines and doors made of colliders. I managed to create a system where the player can initially choose one path to take and backtrack and choose another one if so needed. Mapping out a way for the coroutines to do their magic took a bit of doing and then pen storming using my brain and paper. Once that was done it was implementation time. The player will walk up to the first fork and it will show two paths they could possibly take. Then whichever direction they choose will lock in that path for the player to follow. There was an issue with the coroutine firing even if the player wasn't directly on the tile in question. This was repeating the initial animation used to show the two differing paths the player could potentially take. It turned out to be due to duplicated assets for the decision tiles. I found a way to eventually stop the coroutine after it was initially triggered. Next up was a way to make sure the player can't just keep going without any consequences. A turn counter system was used. It would only count up when the player first crosses the tile and not on the way back. Next up I brought in the level management system from the previous game Jumper and changed up the screens a bit with new font assets and buttons. The course will require some adjustments before it would start working properly. After this was setting up the rest of the stages. Creating and using prefabs didn't work as the logic triggers were set based on tag names. So I had to manually place and reorient everything which took up valuable time. The collider doors and other items needed realigning and adjusting as well. The orientation changes affected the path selection system the player would take as the first one was based on the player either going right or straight up. This was decided by movement keys which had to be adjusted to work in every scenario. So onto the third level which was the most elaborate yet with only one starting tile and three initial starting paths. This level also had an extra path the player can potentially take which created an index out of bounds issue for earlier levels. This took a bit of trial and error to get fixed but eventually it was ironed out. The game was also tweaked to let the player restart on the level they were currently on. I couldn't find any footage of the playthrough for this level even though the log notes say that it was completed. And an apparent object reference bug which was fixed is occurring again when I tried loading up the game at present to try it out. Considering this video is being made nearly a year after the game, the logic seems a bit too cryptic to decipher so it won't be able to see the intricate play I had created I'm afraid. With only 6 days remaining on my 21 days of making games and only 2 games completed, I decided not to go ahead with the fourth stage. And since most of the requirements were functioning on some level, it was time to move on to the next game. Game 3. To keep the momentum going and finish this up sooner rather than later, I decided that my third game will be something I was kinda working on prior to all of this, which was creating an isometric 3D animated environment. I'd sketched out the basic design that I had envisioned and using that built up the structures in Blender. At that moment I was just trying to get reacquainted with Blender and figure out a way to import it into Unity. I used a coloring technique I found online for the tree in Blender, but it doesn't appear once inside Unity and I couldn't update it either. Then I added some materials onto the tree model and then imported it into Unity which showed the colors properly and I was able to adjust it after import as well. I redid the rest of the assets and brought them in as separate objects as well. Doing this let me add different materials onto them and color them accordingly. Then I cloned the top of the land objects to create a grass layer. I wanted to add some relief features especially around the edges but left it as a flat surface instead. Next up was the water. At first I wanted to generate meshes programmatically to which I would add animation and material effects. But after hunting around online and Unity Doc for information I decided to park it. I found tutorials for creating water instead. One where the water is animated and another which has a static version. The rendering seemed to go askew after working with the model for a while and the only thing that fixed it was restarting Blender. The static version was the one causing the problem, particularly when trying to get a transparent effect. The render engine works initially and then when trying to create something more solid it just shows an opaque mesh. I tried to recreate something I had seen in the tutorial but with varying levels of success. Either the end results were indiscernible or importing into Unity wouldn't quite work out. After many trials and attempts I ended up using the whole land object instead of just the surface. And then use shape key animations in Blender to simulate motion on the top face of the water object. But again it wouldn't work in Unity at all. It turned out I had to create the key shapes in Blender and import it into Unity first and then animate it. After that I managed to create a few versions of the animated water. It didn't quite have the low poly aesthetic that I was going for. But after tinkering with various versions I finally decided to settle on one. Next up I added a character which would inhabit and move around in this tiny little world. A capsule character was the first iteration, but that just kept falling over. So try the cube instead. Then went around setting up colliders across the perimeter to stop the little guy from falling over the edge as well. Next up was wiring up the movement control. The movement was reversed however, I guess the camera must have been flipped around when I was playing around with it. So I had to flip the motion in the script. A bit of tweaking was required to make the motion look right. And after some adjustments and tinkering in general, things looked okay enough and I decided to wrap it all up with one whole day to spare. So this whole process took 20 days. 4 days for the first game, 10 days for the second, and 6 days for the third. 
Going through this has enabled me to cement some things and I feel more deliberate and focused when it comes to learning about game development. Also the topics which once seemed elusive and esoteric systems with odd controls and mystical settings make more sense to me now. The actual process of making these games has enabled me to clock in day in and day out until things got done. So albeit in a semi-finished state, it still counts as things I've completed. Doing this has also inspired me to plan something more substantial and see it through to completion, which includes polishing gameplay levels and actually publishing something. And making this video has further instilled in me something I've been hearing and known for a while now. That for something worthwhile to emerge, not only is consistency required, you also need sustained, concentrated and focused effort. And this has to be maintained for breakthroughs to happen. If you're curious about this state of work, check out Kyle Newport's book, Deep Work, which I'll link in the description below. If you made it thus far, I really appreciate it. Please consider liking and sharing the video, as well as subscribing to my channel. Thank you for watching. Bye.